Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, you guys. My name is Joshua Angel. No, I am not related to Chris Angel. And this, I don't know how long I've been growing it for since I was like, you know, 15. I'm 30 now. All right, guys. Well, in today's video, I'm going to share with you how I became a Muslim, right? How I reverted to Islam. Well, alhamdulillah for that. I do want to say thank you to a new person channel for allowing me to share my story with you guys. Inshallah, you're going to get tremendous value. Without further ado, let's jump in. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alamin. Hamdun Kathir and Tam Barakan Fee. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa ashabi wa min wallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, guys. Hopefully, you enjoy this beautiful view, especially if you think that the video sucks. At least it has something nice to look at, inshallah. So, guys, we'll jump right into it. Alhamdulillah, I've been Muslim for the last eight years. And the crazy thing is that I never expected to be someone who claimed to be any religion because for basically the majority of my life I was considered or I'd consider myself an atheist or agnostic you know some somewhere along those lines right and I was always against having a religion not for other people but for myself and you know that's how I lived the majority of my life until Allah you know chose to have mercy upon my soul and got me to Islam now guys prior to Islam I was a heavy metal guitar player. I was a heavy metal musician, long hair. I mean, my hair was longer than the beard. You know what I'm saying? It was like mid back, long hair, don't care, screw authority, <laughs> you know? Just being real, guys, pardon me, but you know, that, that, I mean, that was just, that was my mentality, man. And from the time I was 15 to the time I was 22 when I accepted Slam, I lived and breathed Heavy metal, man. And not just heavy metal, but music in general, man. I love jazz, blues, you name it, man. I was into it. I even like some hip hop and rap, gangster rap, you name it, man. You know, I was into it all. But, you know, metal, metal guitar, uh, guitar ship, musicianship, that was my deal, man. And I spent every waking moment trying to be the greatest guitar player in the world. And just to give you an idea of how dedicated and serious I was when I say that I tried to, you know, I was working towards being the greatest guitar player that ever lived. Man, I spent $1,600 on my guitar. I had a two-tone Dean Razorback, Dimebag Daryl Razorback, and it cost twice as much as my first, <laughs> as my first car, man. And on top of that, to give you a type of mindset that I was in, just kind of sharing you, man, and being real with, you know, who I was, man. The band that I was in was with my younger brother, and my best friend at the time. And, you know, I wanted that band to be called Deny Your Maker. Oh my gosh, I just scared the crap out of this lady, man. I was trying to adjust the camera and get in focus and she just stopped dead in her tracks. I was like, I ain't recording you, don't worry. <laughs> I ain't gonna make a YouTube famous. Well, now you kinda are, but. Guys, that just kinda shows you the mindset that I was in. And, you know, it kinda shows you that obviously I wasn't looking for religion. I wasn't looking for Dean. I wasn't looking for a slam of all religions, right? Some who, you know, most people consider the, to be the, the strictest of religions, which is not the case at all, but, you know, that's just the perception that most people have. So, it caught me more than anybody off guard when Allah started opening up my mind and my eyes and my ears and my heart to El Islam. So, obviously, the most pressing question then becomes, dude, Josh, how the heck did you become, how did you go from being a head banging, lead guitar shredding dude to being a Muslim, man? Well, it's pretty simple. I actually met a Muslim. Yep, your boy met a Muslim. And not only Muslim man, I actually met a Muslim sister. Now I know what you're thinking, man, that's haram, dude. What are you talking to a Muslim sister for? And I get that, Ak. I get that, but I wasn't Muslim at the time, you know? I had no idea. I didn't know about the halal and haram, man. And, you know, that was honestly the only way that someone with my attitude, with my belief system, you know, with my mindset, that was the only way that I would even consider listening to what anyone had to say about Islam. You know, of course, like, you know, I had, I wouldn't say I had Muslim, I had Muslim acquaintances, right? We'll just be real, dude. You know, I used to go to the tobacco shop and buy cigarettes from Muslims, man. And I'd see them praying and stuff, and you know, they were always cool with me. Um, one time I seen the guy, you know, I seen the brother in Sajud, and I thought he was taking a, taking a nap or something, and I'm like, SubhanAllah, what's this guy doing, right? 
And so guys, prior to meeting that Muslim sister and actually getting to know her, like it, I've always had this mentality that I always want to understand people who have completely different ideologies and belief systems and morals and things like that than I do. For example, I don't know about you guys, but I love studying serial killers. I'm just gonna be real, I think they're fascinating. You know, like how can someone be like that? How could someone do something like that to somebody else? Or Ku Klux Klan or all these different people. You know, my wife is uh, from Kenya. She's from Africa, right? Born and raised. She's been in the States for just a couple of years. Our son is obviously, you know, half Somali, right? Half, so half Somali. Uh, my daughter from a previous relationship, she's uh, Hispanic, right? So, you know, I, so when people look at me and they go, okay, you have a black, black son, half black son, you have a half Hispanic daughter, you're Muslim, they're going to automatically hate me for those things. And it's, it's so fascinating for me to, to understand why. And the point is, is that that same mentality and that same mindset is what I went into when I started learning about Islam. Guys, if you're getting value from today's video, be sure to drop your boy a like down below because it's gonna help a new person channel. It really does help our channels, guys. When you hit that like button, when you smash it, or you know, you just tap on it ever so lightly. Now guys, I don't wanna take up a whole lot more of your time. I'm gonna share with you three brief reasons why I chose to accept the slam and why I've remained Muslim for the last eight years. Now again, guys, this is, this is brief. This is not a long, articulated, deep, drawn out explanation as to why I accepted the slam. These are just brief, brief, a brief summary, right? Number one is that Tawheed is the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the fact that Islam has negated every single route, every single path, has set up boundaries, right? It has made it impossible for you to worship other than Allah. The amount of detailed explanation and of course it is from Allah, so it is perfect, right? It's perfect that it is so well thought out that, again, there's just no way that if you study Islam that you can worship other than Allah. It has just negated every single path to worshiping other than the creator of the heavens and the earth. So that's number one. Number two is the justice of Al-Islam. Meaning, when I started reading about Islam, what it means to be a Muslim, what Islam teaches. And it said that just because you say the Shahada, the Kalamata Tawheed, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa Ashadu an Muhammad sallallahu right? You testify there's no way they worship but Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is his last and final messenger. That does not mean that you are 101% guaranteed to not go to the hellfire. And I said, man, that is so just because, you know, growing up as a Christian or raising, you know, raised in a Christian household, it was basically like, all you gotta do is believe. You don't have to change your actions. You can go to church on Sunday morning, leave the church, and go do everything that the pastor just told you to avoid, and all is good. You're going straight to heaven, right? And I just couldn't accept that. Like I always say, paradise, Jannah isn't that cheap. It's much more, you know, much more expensive than that. And so, when you see that Muslims some, you know, may Allah protect us. Some of us, unfortunately, will have to go to Jahannam to the hellfire before we can actually be given permission to enter paradise, man. I just thought that was very just and it, uh, it further cemented my belief in Al-Islam. And the third and final reason is because we are commanded to seek knowledge. It's not recommended. It's not, hey, you know, if you get around to it, no, it is a commandment and an obligation to seek knowledge, which again, going back to being raised as a Christian, you just don't ask certain things, you just accept certain things, you just go on blind faith. And, you know, again, anyone who has any type of, I'm just, I'm just being real, who has any type of analytical intellect, you know what I mean? Someone who wants to break down things and truly understand them, you just can't accept blind, you just can't accept things blindly. I, at least I can't. And so when not only, like again, it, not only are you recommended, is it a recommendation to seek Islam, but it is an obligation and mandatory that if you do not understand something, if there's something that is not clear to you, that you have to, as Allah says, if you don't know, then ask those who know, right? 
you're commanded. That's a commandment from the law. Go figure out the answer. So those are the three main reasons why I found in my heart that Islam is the truth. So guys, in brief, that is my story. If you got value from the video, man, be sure to subscribe to A New Person channel, man. It really does help the channel. And if you're not a Muslim yet, if it's something that you've been considering, my only question to you is, what are you waiting for? And what I mean by that is, you know, there's a lot of things that we disagree upon as, as you know, as humans, as humanity, as a, you know, as a global population, we disagree on a lot of things. But one thing that we can all agree upon is that you and I will die. That is a fact, Jack. And on top of that, we don't know when we're going to die. We have an assumption, oh, you know, 60, 70, maybe 80, something like that. But we know death can come to you like that. And the thing is, man, is if death comes to you and you heard about Islam, its teachings were crystal clear. You didn't take Islam from people who don't practice Islam, right? Meaning media, news, these different things, right? Because if you want to learn something, if I want to learn tennis, am I going to go to someone who is a bowler? No. I'm going to go to someone who is an expert, is a champion, as someone who is well known and established as a great tennis player, right? Their credentials, right? Same thing with the slam. If you want to learn a slam, learn it from Muslims who actually practice it. And guys, with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Zekalo here in Butterfly come. Please again subscribe to the channel. It really does help get the get the word out, man. And until then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.